Hey, welcome friends. This is Dr. Heather from Ask Dr. Heather live here in my kitchen with my sons and their friends. You will see them scatter. Not only because they not like cockroaches because I have no cockroaches in my kitchen, but actually we have done uh, implementation here in the Carden house where they're all taking turns to make dinner. So yesterday Isaac cooked amazing hamburgers and some sides with that. Tonight Christian is making fish tacos and I said, what should we talk about? Vegetables? Because I have on my YouTube channel, I have about a hundred questions about vegetables and GERD and SIBO. And then I asked my sons, what should you talk about? He's like intermittent fasting. They are big into the CrossFit community and said, you know, there's a lot of people who don't know much about intermittent fasting. So, hey Dave, thanks for joining us. And if you're brand new to Ask Dr. Heather, know that this is absolutely meant to be shared. I actually base our lives based on questions that you ask. So I'm going to talk a little bit about gut health and vegetables because, again, I love that people are asking about vegetables and people are trying to introduce vegetables, but with our guts being a mess, people are having trouble eating them. So we just grabbed and asked Christian to just grab some veggies out of my fridge. So let's talk about celery. It'd be the same for cabbage or any cruciferous vegetables. We are not rabbits and we're not cows. We don't have ruminant stomachs, which means we don't have four stomachs. We can pass along the food and kind of regurgitate it back up and send it back down. So many people have trouble digesting vegetables. So that's why it might be better, like let's take spinach for an example, or we can go back to celery. But if you actually just kind of blanch spinach, you actually make it more bioavailable to get the iron and calcium out of it. Yes, it's great roughage when it's raw, but if you have ever taken like two huge handfuls, like four cups of spinach and thrown it in a blender or thrown it in a saute pan, it makes this huge little spot of spinach. You actually make the calcium and iron and B vitamins more bioavailable. So it makes a small little bit there. But, but you also have reduced some of the fiber, which should mean it's more easy for your body to break it down. So that's another way to do it. So let's talk about different ways to get veggies in. Because normally my kind of straight answer on how many vegetables should I eat, 20 years ago I'd say, you know, four to six veggies a day. But now the nutritional standards on some of the dietary recommendations are actually, get this guy's drum roll, eight to 11 cups of vegetables. Yep, eight to 11 cups of vegetables. Why so many? It's because we are macronutrient depleted. We used to have 18 inches of topsoil. Now we have two inches of topsoil. The reason that we eat those veggies is because they dig down into the soil and they get all those macronutrients and those trace minerals. And that's what we get when we're eating vegetables. All those trace minerals like molybdenum and magnesium, um, all the B vitamins, copper, iodine, um, iodo, I mean, just magnesium. I said that already, molybdenum. Sometimes my kids make me a little bit nervous and people watching, and believe it or not. But we get all those amazing minerals from the vegetables that we eat. And if we don't have enough topsoil, the roots can't dig down and get them. They actually just go lateral or horizontal and they don't, aren't able to get all the stuff that they need. That's why we have to keep multiplying how many servings that we need. That's why in some cases, juicing is is okay. We know that the purple pill, which is for GI issues, is the number one pill sold today. So we're going to talk about that and we'll tie that into intermittent fasting. So say that you do have a um, sodium deficiency or you know you need some great diuretic help. And I love celery because it's a natural diuretic that is potassium sparing, which means you can eat lots of natural celery, especially if you're sweating, you're here in the Midwest where it's super hot. You can use this to, to either just snack on it like it is and put some peanut butter on it or some sun butter, or you can line it up and put some tuna salad in there. You can use it as a nice little holder for food if you want to, or you can juice it as well because then you get the bioavailability nutrients out of the celery. You can also cook it. You know, I'm a big fan of bone broth. You can put this in your bone broth, lots and lots of nutrients in here, but you can also juice the whole thing. You can put a little cucumber, a little lemon, a little ginger, and make a great adrenal tonic out of it. It's not going to spike your insulin. It's not going to spike your glucose or blood sugar and lots of trace minerals in there. Very, very, very low carb. So you can also get some great value out of it. And it's really economical at the store. So when you're talking about eating eight to 11 cups of vegetables, which is a great question somebody asked on my YouTube channel, isn't that gonna throw me out of my ketosis or low carb uh, diet? The answer is no, because there's hardly any, I love the thumbs up there, there's hardly any calories when you start talking about like four cups of spinach or a whole clove of of celery or like three heads of cabbage is like nine carbs. And if you actually 
took a um, grater and just grated down cabbage, which we love to do at our house, and just throw it in the pan with some olive oil or some avocado oil or some bacon grease or coconut oil. It makes a very small bit, actually, of vegetables by the time you do that. Again, you're broken down, so once you start to break down vegetables, then what happens is as you eat them, they work like little Brillo pads inside your tummy, and they grab a hold of toxins and fats and excess hormones and help pull out those things and scoot them out into the toilet. So great rule of thumb is try to get in 8 to 11 cups of vegetables vegetables, the low glycemic vegetables, which is lots and lots of loaded greens, and then try to eat 50% raw and 50% cooked. Now cooked, if you can tolerate them, if not, then eat everything cooked, but eat them lightly blanched, like have the water boiling and just barely let them sit in the water for two or three minutes. That's enough to kind of take stage one of digestion down, or you can broil them at four or five minutes. So kale chips, things like that, you can make right in the broiler. You make zucchini chips that way, or if you're cooking outside and grilling, again, just put them on high heat for four or five minutes. Or the other way we talked about is actually juicing them because they're still alive, especially if you use a cold compressed juicer. Now, if you use, use one of those ones that are a little more economical and just go zzz, super fast, it's a heat compressed juicer. So the juice is only gonna last just a few hours. The cold compressed juicer doesn't heat up it, so you're still getting the nutrients, but it's again gonna last maybe three days in your refrigerator. So if you know you've got some gut issues, you still wanna get all those vegetables in there. This is people with SIBO, people with gut yeast issues, people with uh, GERD or irritable bowel, Again, we're talking about gut health because our gut brain balance is so important. And I love them getting so many questions like people trying to make those changes, getting more vegetables in, getting your carbs from real live enzymes, things that used to grow from the ground and get our carbohydrates from those rather from grains. We've just got to figure out what works for your gut. And there's no straight line across the board that says this is what everyone can eat. You've just got to start trying what works for you. I am going to apologize. My blog did go down yesterday because we're doing some revamping on the WordPress. But if you just want to private message me, I can go ahead and email you at the ketogenic guide that I have. It's a four page guide to start your day in the right way. That's got my autoimmune friendly ketogenic low carb guide for you to just start implementing the foods. And I love having the kids in the background. I should say young people in the background because they have more of that toddler style of eating. I can guarantee you, I can ask them, none of the three of them are counting their calories. They're not counting their macros. When they're hungry, they eat. They will not let me pre-feed them. They won't. I'm like, you guys want to eat? Like, no, we're not hungry. You guys eat before you go out? No, we're not hungry. We'll grab something later when we're hungry. As adults, we should take tips from our young I'm going to say young adults, teenagers, because that's what they do. I can't get them to eat if they're not hungry, but that's what we should do as adults. Instead of like, oh, I'm bored. I think I'll eat. What should I have? I should have some popcorn. I should have some celery. That's how our guts become a mess. So we're going to roll this over to intermittent fasting. So eight to 11 cups. How do you get them in? Like sauteing them or juicing them or blanching them or putting them on a bone broth is a great way to do that. Or putting them in dips or salsa. So when you combine things like Christian has a salsa he's making tonight for our fish tacos or shrimp tacos and you know when you put some acidic acid with them something like lemon juice or parsley or basil or cilantro when you start missing a little bit of acid with the best base balance it actually helps aid in digestion it's so like tomatoes are acidic and lemon juice is acidic or lime juice I'm not for sure how he's making it and you put it with the healthy fats like the avocados it's going to go great with the shrimp because the fat's going to help coat the stomach the acid's going to help digestion in the stomach base which is going to help the small intestine absorb the food so it's a win-win situation when you start combining those. So when we start talking about the gut being a mess, again, whether whatever letters you want to use, IBS or GERD or SIBO or whatever the letters are, all we need to know is that the gut is out of balance. Things aren't digesting like they should, and we're finding macronutrient deficiencies. We have, we have over 500 different gut bugs found in there. What happens is in order to repair the gut, we have to give it a break. This isn't all going about keto or go, all going about low carb. It's about eating healthy, real foods and not eating processed food. This is eliminating processed keto food, eliminating processed low carb food. I get this question all the time. It's eating real whole food. So that would be in a shorter amount of time. So I'm going to challenge you and I'm going to ask everybody on here right now, what is your eating window? Are you eating an eight hour window, a 12 hour window? And that means for somebody who doesn't know what intermittent fasting means, it means the moment that you get up and you start putting calories in your body, if you are having coffee and you're, or tea and you're putting heavy whipping cream in there, that contains calories. Anything that's gonna cause your blood sugar to go up because anytime you have carbohydrates, we're calling on insulin, insulin says, oh my gosh, let's go get it. And then your blood sugar goes up. So calories require that. And then the last moment in time that you have any type of calories to put in your mouth before 
before you go to bed. So let's say you eat from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. That's a 12 hour window. Maybe you're a person who try to do a, tries to do a little bit better and maybe eat your first meal. Thank you, Mike. Well done. I knew you'd be the first one. And Dave, the second one to answer. Well done. They're both eating in what is called the perfect window, which is an 8 16. They're eating an eight hour window and letting their gut rest 16 hours. That's the best way to get your blood sugar to balance. If you're trying to get the metabolic system reset, trying to really get your lifestyle reset and transform what's happening in the gut, you've got to let the gut rest. The gut's turning over all the time, but if you're throwing in food 17 times a day like the average person, all it's doing is working to digest food, working to sift out, is it a macronutrient, is it a carbohydrate, is it a protein, is it red dye number 40, is it got some type of other thing in there I don't even recognize? When you can lower down the part the hours that you're actually feeding the gut, then it can actually go work to repair the gut, work to reestablish that normal gut flora, work to reestablish the hydrochloric acid and the parietal cells in the stomach, work to extract the B12 that the stomach so necessarily needs in order for digestion. So an 816 is really optimal to maintain where your health is right now. If you've got significant gut health issues, again, I'm not here to give any advice, but just share what is clinically current happening right now in the gut brain balance world and what's happening in the keto low carb world is why it's so effective in helping heal the gut is actually maybe narrow it down. So Mike and Dave who have shared they're eating in an eight hour window, I'm gonna challenge you maybe to eat in a seven hour window for five days a week. I mean, see how that works for you. Or maybe just take three days a week or two days a week and eat in a six hour window and then go back to an eight hour window. It's kind of like just upping your exercise a few minutes because that extra two hours or three hours a week you're giving your gut to a break can actually make a huge significant increase influence on what your gut's able to do and able to rest. So when you go back to eating real whole foods, using them like massive cleaners, again, vegetables, that's why when you go to a nice restaurant, they bring out the, the, the salad first or the vegetables first, because those again are their pre-digestive enzymes, those prebiotics, so to speak, to grab all that junk out that comes before the meal comes, whether it's steak or whether it's fish or whether it's lamb before the real meal comes, because it sets the course and sets the pH for the entire stomach as you come for your meal. And think about that nice dinner again it maybe takes 20 minutes for the first course or 15 minutes and another 15 minutes for the second course I see a lot of people doing chewing challenges out there and water challenges I'm just gonna actually help you challenge like start writing down when you first first really recognize that you're hungry and you first put food in your mouth or calories and then the last moment of the day that you put food in your calories and no toothpaste doesn't count and mouthwash doesn't count and if you're oil pulling I got those questions that doesn't count either you don't have to count that so um, and I do know this again is meant to be shared so if you shared it write down share down below because that's what this is about sharing is caring and we know that when we start sharing information we make a much healthier community so I hopefully have addressed some of your questions if you haven't checked out my YouTube channel it's just ask dr. Heather and a lot of these questions came off a video I did about food allergies and recognizing if and when you had food allergies. I had a conversation with my good friend Pam who does a lot of my cooking videos and I kept asking her because she's going to hit a solar plateau about dairy. She's like, no, I don't have any gas or bloating. It hasn't really changed my hormone because I'm like, man, let's pull the dairy out. And today she kind of said, you know what? I think that swelling in my feet that's been going on actually was dairy. So she just did a little free challenge, pulled out the dairy and voila her feet stopped swelling within like a couple weeks it was that quick and that easy so I'm gonna encourage you to do the same thing look at a good list of vegetables again private message me or put it down below your email if you want to give it out generally I say people protect the house and don't put your email out for everybody but my blog is down right now due to reconstruction so our revision I should say I'll be happy to email you that list of um, glycemic index vegetables what that means is you want to pick vegetables from the very first list I have because it has the lowest glycemic index which means the lowest influx on your blood sugar and you can eat again six eight to eleven cups I mean if you eat three heads of cabbage it's like nine carbs you give a lot of stuff when you're talking about cabbage or celery or things like that but just take a little look back and say you know what I'm probably not eating enough vegetables it's probably why my body's still toxic I know a lot of people just did the reboot so if you finish the reboot write down reboot down below and, and maybe say, you know, I'm still having some issues. I finished the reboot last Wednesday, but I'm still having some GI issues, some gas, some bloating, some in increased visits to the restroom. And that's where vegetables can come into play, where they can actually help c continue to actually excrete some of those toxins that are still coming out of your body at that cellular level, which you want to have happen, because that's where we really start, start anti-aging our bodies, cleaning up that stuff at the deep, dark level. So we hopefully talked about two major things today, vegetables, what to eat, when to eat, which means if you cannot tolerate the raw ones, then simply blanch them. Don't boil them for 20 minutes. Boil them for one minute and pull them away from the heat or cook them for four or five minutes 
minutes at about 500 degrees. So broil them very lightly and very fast. That'll just break down the fiber so you still get some nutrition. If you oil over boil, if you over um, broil, if you over grill, you're gonna just get all, you're gonna really get all the nutrients just flat knocked out of them. You're, you're gonna actually make them not bioavailable. There's really not much left. You're still gonna have some roughage there, but you're not gonna get the nutrients out of it. So then your 11 cups may go to 20 cups. So just make sure you don't overdo it. I know I have some chefs on here. So if you've got some comments, please comment down below. I'm not a certified chef. I'm just a mom cook um, and an educator. So I want to help people learn the most they can about nutrition, but I don't want you not eating vegetables because you do have some type of stomach issue and your body wasn't, won't allow you to eat raw vegetables. Again, we're not cows or rabbits. So some people do have a very difficult time doing that, or maybe you have a lot of dental issues and you really just can't chew celery. And that's where juicing can come into play. Or again, you can actually make a celery soup, which is super helpful or make some gazpacho this time of year. If you want to get some good vegetables in some squash, those a little bit higher. And again, once you start to cook things like carrots or squashes, once you cook them, the sugar does go up on that. And um, that's why you want to add a little bit of fat to it, like some coconut milk or coconut oil. And that will actually help lower down the glucose or glycemic index. So again, thank you guys for joining me. Hopefully it's helped answer some of your questions. My name again is Dr. Dr. Heather from Ask Dr. Heather. This is meant to help educate and help answer your questions or help clarify some confusion you may have about what's happening in the health world today. And again, today was all about vegetables, how many to eat, when to eat them. And then again, what intermittent fasting really means. It means from the first time you consume calories into your mouth, from the last moment in time you consume calories into your mouth. And, and just think about this, because this is your homework for you. I would love to have everyone attempt to eat like Mike and Dave are in an eight hour window. And if you're already doing an 816, meaning you're eating an eight hour window, and then 16 hours you're not eating, you're still consuming water and coffee and tea and exogenous ketones are fine to consume in that time frame. Um, but you don't want to have anything else in that time frame, but water, coffee, and tea, things that are zero calories, and then exogenous ketones, as long as your blood sugar stays the same, those are fine to have in your not eating window. Um, and then if you're already doing an 816, maybe try three or four days at a six or seven hour window. See how that works for your gut. That will help kind of shed that. And then again, get those veggies in there. Make those a huge priority for you. Oftentimes people start trying to keep these macro calculators. Go back to the young, uh, young men's style of eating, which means I'm gonna eat when I'm super hungry and I'm gonna, but slow down a little bit and chew your food 20 times, or each bite 20 times. Be mindful of what you're eating. Have good conversation. Put the phone down while you're eating, but just be mindful of that. And if you need to set your timer on your phone, which I have a lot of people do, start. And then at the end of the day, stop and know that that's when your eating window was. And there's also an app called Zero that will actually also calculate that over week time. But be mindful that your last consumption of food is four hours before bedtime. So four hours, so have your last meal at six if you go to bed at 10 or because it takes that long for your whole gut to empty. So we talk about the gut-brain balance. That means that if you eat your last food at like 10 p.m., that your whole digestive tract, your whole autonomic nervous system, nervous system is not gonna slow down until four hours after the last food is consumed. So that's gonna be 2 a.m., which means if you're gonna wake up at six, you're not getting a lot of sleep if I did my math right on that. So 10 to two, right? That's four hours. So that can also help. So push that dinner back. I know um, my husband's at the gym right now, so um, Christian's like to cook tonight. And we said, hey, let's eat like at six or 6.30. I don't wanna go much after that. So I'm gonna jump off here because I wanna make sure that I've got time for my food to digest so I can get good sleep hygiene set in so when I wake up I don't wake up hungry because my cortisol levels off because I ate too late I want to make sure I eat a lot of vegetables because that fiber is going to help keep me full the guacamole that he has over there the fat's going to help keep me full and satisfied which means satiety and then that way I'm less likely to snack throughout the night and not having the snack food is also a big bonus I did a little video on that the other day so again this is Dr. Heather saying God bless please know this is meant to be shared past videos are up and stored on my Ask Dr. Heather under a playlist so there's some great cooking videos videos. There is a playlist just on general health and wellness. If you have a question you're just dying to know more about, type it right down here. Let me know. And as I have a whole running list of questions and I simply answer them as they come in. So again, you guys have an amazing day. We'll be seeing you soon.